Michael Grant, our CAM application engineer specialist for Applied CAX. So you know who we are. We are a Siemens PLM partner. We handle CAM, CAD, and a variety of other engineering solutions. And then Michael himself has been in manufacturing in one form or another since 1996 as a manager, variety of CAM softwares. He also does beta testing for Siemens. So when it comes time to fix glitches or take suggestions, he's one of the nationally recognized experts that inputs on that. And so today what he's going to do is go ahead and walk you through a very powerful product called CAM Foundation. This is the base of any of the um, NX CAM programs. So for those of you that are current clients in the line, you already have these capabilities in there. But for someone that's using something like Master Cam, Smart Cam, Gibbs Cam, any other type of CAM software, you can buy this and use it in conjunction with that CAM software to help clean up your parts for programming. Around $1,000, what it is is a very, very powerful tool it can really speed up the amount of time you spend if you're importing a different CAD format into your CAM program, say from like SolidWorks, and then really cut down the amount of time you spend in prep and cleanup up to 50% or more. And so again, at $1,000, the break even for that is very quick. You don't have to replace your entire CAM or CAD software. You can use it anything. I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to Michael, who is going to walk you through the power of CAM Foundation. All right, Michael, take it away. All right, thanks, Ian. So uh, as Ian was saying, you could import multiple model types, normal formats, your parasolid step, I just, solid work, various formats are included. I'm going to go ahead and open. Uh, the first example I have is sometimes when you're importing from other software, you'll get uh, whole features that are split, have split surfaces, and so CAM systems won't recognize them as holes, but instead uh, multiple surfaces. Um, so I'll go ahead and open this and, and show how you can optimize, uh, use a utility that we call optimized face uh, to uh, clean up those split surfaces. Uh, this model was imported from a step model. And let me bring it onto the screen here. So it's a, it's a large plate. And if I zoom in, you can see here where I have a couple, couple different faces. So that would prevent me from being able to recognize this as a whole. So I'm going to go ahead, and I've got my synchronous toolbar down here at the bottom. And the utility, as you can see, I have highlighted there called Optimize Face. And so I'll just click on that. And go ahead, and I'm going to highlight all. And then just hit OK. And then you give me a report here. Didn't, as you can see here, it didn't have any cylinders. And now it, it recognizes 110 cylinders. Um, it converted B surface. There was 184. It's down to 9 now. And it actually converted some revolves. So it reduced the face count from 269 down to 165. And then the edge count from 801 down to 388. You can now see I've just got one continuous surface inside the holes. And this also can work if you have a B surface type fillet blend. You can convert it to a normal uh, blend with a what we call a replace blend. So that's one example of uh, kind of on the simplest side uh, how to optimize faces, clean up edges, to simplify and clean up your, mo your model. So then I'll open my second example here. So in this case, I've uh, gone ahead and uh, built this assembly in CAM Foundation. That's something that uh, I would probably, I'll put together in another uh, webinar series, how to build assemblies. Um, but we do allow you to build assemblies and import models. So I, I imported this vise here and set up my part. I also brought in a full machine, so 
if I go to my assembly here, I have the, the full machine for simulation. And then what I've done is uh, brought in a part of a mold core. And in this case, I used synchronous. So I'm going to undo the, the synchronous I did apply. If you choose to do uh, history mode, you do, even though you're using synchronous modeling, you get a history. So you can roll back. Here, I'll highlight all those. At the bottom of my tree, as I unselect, I'm undoing the synchronous modeling that I apply. As you can see, the features start to reappear. So if you, if you make a mistake, you can apply a different method. So I'll walk through uh, what I did there. So the first thing I'll use is a delete face. And we have a nice selection intent for picking blends. So I'm going to choose connected blend faces. And just choose that right there, and it highlights. And I'm going to choose heal. There's an option to heal the faces, which is normally what you would use unless you get into complex surfaces. You can choose not to heal it and leave a, a hole, and then you can patch it with different tools or surfacing. So in this case, I let it go ahead and heal that. And then the other part, I'll do this area down in here. The purpose here is if you get a model, uh, so your customer sends a model, whether it be a parasolid, SOLIDWORKS part, or, or some other uh, standard format, you know, you might just want to face or rough in your block. We're allowing you to do here with synchronous without uh, purchasing modeling. And for those of you with modeling, you can also use these tools. Basically, simplify the part quickly, which will represent one stage of your, your in-process work piece. So you can have modeled your first stage might be uh, roughing in the block and getting the general shape. And then the, the second stage, have a particular machine that that you like to use. It's a lower cost machine, doesn't tie up your higher performance machine, and you can just rough in with that, or maybe it's a manual machine. So what I'm showing here is, is how you can do that and still have the ability to undo your synchronous changes, and, and then you have your second and third stage of manufacturing. Maybe it's an EDM feature you want to get rid of, and you just want to mill around that. So coming back to this, I'm going to leave it on connected blend faces and choose that area right there and hit apply. And then for the center area, um, we have a uh, now this is a, a dumb model, so it, it just NX just knows um, by the shape. Uh, so this is something pretty unique to us that we figure out what type type of feature it is, even though it's not a parameterized model with a feature tree. This was not designed in NX, so it's just a feature with shapes. But we have uh, this selection intent that still helps for quick selection. So with one click, I selected that entire boss uh, with having it on boss or pocket. Then I can just hit apply. And then I'll do that again in this area. Uh, actually, for that area, I'm going to use slot. With one selection, that whole area is showing me a preview, which is an option. And so I can go ahead and get rid of that. Another feature I was going to show was replace face, which can be very powerful. Even in uh, complex surface models, you can use this utility. this face to be replaced with this one. So that brings it up and just basically a, a simplified flat surface. You could either bring this surface up to here with the same replaced face. I'll just show kind of a preview of that. So I could quickly bring that up. But in this case, I'm going to leave that so I can show you Another utility you have, which you can actually dimension models and features. 
another synchronous option for dimensioning. So I'm going to dimension these bosses in the middle. And so the first thing I want to do is pick the origin. What am I dimensioning from? And because I have this quadrant point selected, I could select that quadrant point. And then up here, I'm going to highlight this arc. And because I have arc center selection intent turned on, I'll get the center of the arc. And so now, it wants to know where, where do you want to put this dimension. I'm just going to put it out here for now. And then if I highlight the box for faces to move, it automatically picked one because uh, it was connected to the arc. But I'm going to go ahead and add the rest. So I'm on boss or pocket face, selecting the side faces. And so now I can uh, you know, go ahead and change the dimension, hit apply. It moves those features. And again, it's in the feature tree, so if I, I don't like what I've done, change it and it'll move around. Now that's kind of a simple example because I mean, you could change the, the orientation, the angle. There's a lot of options here. As an example, if I go to move face, I can even you know change the angle of this top face. Because I didn't select those bosses, it doesn't want me to go beyond them right now, but I could also slope them the other way. So what I did is I picked a vector and then also what point I want to slope from. This might fail, but so those types of things can also be dimensioned. It's not just the simple changes. <laughs> not, that, not that we want that one there. I wanted to show the, the manufacturing that I've applied here. So if we go back into our history and undo everything. And then regenerate our operations. I'll show how NX handles these changes since it's all being done inside NX. So we'll simulate this, which includes the entire machine simulation. So you can show the tool path here. So we're facing this. And this was uh, created in, in the CAM Foundation package. So we're facing off the top of the block. I didn't put that tool in a pocket. These are pockets, just like your machine has, your tool changer. So tricking the face milling, because that's what comes with uh, CAM Foundation, I was able to use a regular end mill and essentially mill this part in using a face milling operation. So it, it roughs in that general shape. You can see it tries to create that pocket area. When we did our synchronous, we got rid of that add those back, and now we just regenerate our operations. Uh, the only one I'd have to, probably because I changed the face, is the face mill. The 
rough core updated and now I'm not roughing in that pocket area. It's just going to basically build the general shape of the core. That quickly I'm able to, to build a simple model to represent the first stage of manufacturing. The selection tent works well for um, if you have a slot feature that's open, and maybe it's an EDM type of feature. Um, you can also uh, so that pretty much covers what I was planning to show today. I just wanted to give a basic overview of synchronous technology and how to quickly edit your parts without the need for a modeling package, which can add a lot of cost. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. If there's any questions, I'm open for questions. Let's go ahead and give it a couple of seconds to see if anyone types any questions in here. Michael, thanks for going through that. Just to summarize again, CAM Foundation is very powerful. It's available for use with any other CAM package. You don't have to replace current CAM package. And then, if you have any questions for us, um, our phone number at Applied CAX is 1-800-746-8134. And then if you just press extension 0, the receptionist can transfer you to either Michael Grant, who ran the webinar, or myself, Ian McGahey, one of the customer service representatives. And at that point, we can make sure you get any questions answered. Or our website is www.applied, A-P-P-L-I-E-D-C-A-X dot com. This webinar will be available on our website for replay. So if you do have anyone else that you think might find this information useful, just go ahead and point them to our website, and they'll go ahead and be able to watch this at their leisure. Other than that, I would like to thank everyone for showing up and taking the time to learn more about the CAM Foundation product. All right. Thanks, everyone.